Good morning. Today we're looking at Section 1, Modeling for Revenue, Cost, and Profit out of Chapter 2, Business Applications out of Business Calculus with Excel. The basic setup we're going to want to look at is some models from economics. Revenue of quantity is quantity times demand price of quantity. Cost is fixed cost plus unit cost times quantity. Profit is revenue minus cost. We're going to look at some basic examples where the cost and demand functions are linear, and so the revenue and profit functions are quadratic. The places where the costs and revenues are the same are the break-even points. In this section, we're going to look to find the break-even quantity in three cases of increasing difficulties. We're going to start with some cases that are where demand price and cost price are linear functions that are nice enough that we can solve algebraically. Then we'll look at things that are more general. And then we'll look at using some data that where we have to find the trend lines to produce the formulas for demand cost and demand price and cost. As is normal practice, I'm going to follow the structure of the text, but not do the exa same examples. The video of the text examples are attached to the text. The first thing we want to look at is the demand price, which is a function of quantity. And if we set it up, we know that it's going to be a downward sloping, and we're going to say a downward sloping line. Now the slope of the line, if the slope equals zero, then that says people are going to pay the same amount no matter how much is on the market. The demand is perfectly elastic. If it's a vertical line, the demand is inelastic. And uh, examples that are traditionally given there are some things that people will keep buying and keep buying however much is available on the market. There are other things, typically they refer to jewelry, where the price is inelastic, that people will pay whatever they need for the various things. But we're going to assume some negative slope of the demand price, and I'm going to be interested in the intersection of the demand price and the slope. If we take a downward sloping line like this and look at and look at Q times demand price, I'm going to get a negative parabola, or a parabola that's going down, and this will be my revenue. And then I want to think about costs. I'm going to assume there's some fixed cost, that I need to have an office open, I need to get a license, there are some things that I'm going to pay the same amount whether I sell one widget or a million widgets. But then there's the variable cost. And we're going to assume this is a unit cost. So I'm going to have something that looks like a line with a variable cost going up. To do an example, I'm going to look at an easy case. I'm going to start with my demand price being equal to 8 minus Q. I'm not going to sell very many. I sell, if I sell 1, the demand price is 7. If I sell 7, the demand price is 1. It's a very small market but it gives me nice even numbers. I'm going to make my fixed cost equal to 5 and my unit cost equal to 2. So my cost is equal to 2q plus 5. My revenue is equal to q times 8 minus q. My profit is equal to Q times 8 minus Q minus quantity 2Q plus 5, which I can do some algebra on this, and I get minus Q squared plus 8Q minus 2Q minus 5, which is equal to minus q squared 
plus 6q minus 5, which is equal minus quantity q squared minus 6q plus 5, which is equal to minus q minus 5 times q minus 1. So profit equals 0. when q equals 1 or 5. And so I can do that with an algebraic case. Now I'm going to use Excel and look at some more some cases that are less amenable to do by hand. And so the first case I'm going to look at is the case we just did, except I'm going to do it in Excel. And I want to look at my formulas. Notice that my formula set up 8 minus q and 2q plus 5. Revenue is q times the demand price. Profit is revenue minus cost. If I want to look at this more generally, I'm going to do quick fill and quick fill down a bit. Now when I've quick filled, I have a, a pattern for the, and I'd like to go from 0 to 10. Unshow the formulas. And what we see is that I had break even at q equal to 1 and break even at q equal to 8. Part of why I wanted to set this up is I'm going to look at what I refer to as an almost simple case, which is the same setup, except now my demand price is 100 minus Q over 200, and my cost is 16 Q plus 2,500. I need 2,500 in startup costs, and it cost me $16 a widget. And I want to do the same kind of thing. I've set up my formulas. I'm going to look at it and go down for a while. And I see I have a profit at zero is somewhere between zero and a thousand and somewhere between sixteen thousand and seventeen thousand. So I'm going to start at zero and start at sixteen thousand and use those as my starting points and just do goal seek. I want to go to data. I want to go to what if analysis. I'm going to goal seek that my value, I want my profit to be zero, and I'm going to change A21. And I see I break even at about 30 widgets. Similarly, I go and do the same, same idea, going to zero on A22, and I break even at about 16,770 widgets. If I look at the formulas for this, the formulas are very similar. I just took my formulas and wrote them on down. One of the things you should notice between the simple case and what's the almost simple case is they're very similar, except I'm using different formulas. Again, the idea of working with Excel as I build templates. Since this is such a straightforward template, I can make a more general case where I'm going to take the whole thing that I had done before and now put the four constants of my two linear equations, put them off to the side as numbers that I can easily change. So my cost is going to be my fixed cost plus my variable cost times my number of units. My demand price is going to be my demand intercept plus the quantity times the demand slope. I've set up the same problem with the same set of numbers. I now can go and look at them in general. I've established a pattern now that includes the first column. I want a quick fill. This gives me a table. I look at what's happening. The prices are coming back down. 
I'm going to just guess and guess badly that I'm going to guess zero for my first intercept and I'm going to guess 20,000 for my second intercept. My first intercept, I go to my data tab. In the data tab, I'm going to do what if analysis goal seek. I'm going to change E18 to zero by changing A18. And I similarly am going to change with what if analysis goal seek, I'm going to change E19 to zero by changing A19. And we get the same numbers. The advantage of this is if someone said, no, the fixed cost wasn't 2,500, the fixed cost was 3,500, and the variable cost, it's more expensive than you thought, it's 18. We're going to have the same values on demand price now I simply recompute the what if analysis. Go to zero by changing A18. I see I take more units to get to my break even point and my second break even point. I'm going to do goal seek, change E19 to zero by changing A19. And the second break-even point is earlier. So I have, with a higher fixed cost and a higher variable cost, I'm going to have a lower margin of profitability. The next complication we're going to look at is the data case. So instead of giving us formulas, someone has given us data. I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I've been doing. I'd like to insert a scatter plot. And with the scatter plot, it makes sense to look at these. These are really different size things. So I'm going to just look at them and format the data series, put one of them on a secondary axis so I can see that, in fact, it's a line going down, the other's a line going up. They look close to a line, but they're not going to be exactly a line. So I'd like to start with the demand price at a trend line. I do want it to be linear, but I'd like to display the equation on the chart. And I'd like to make that a larger font. I'm going to go up to 14 point font. I'd like to copy this in as this is my projected demand price. As we've done before, I'm going to have to change this from math to Excel. X is times A2. And this gives me a demand price, my projected demand price. Notice that my projected demand prices are pretty close to my actual demand prices. I'm going to do the same thing with my cost. I'm going to add a trend line. I'd like to show the equation on the chart. I'd like to go to that and make it a larger size so I can read it. I'm going to copy it, paste it in with my projected cost. convert the formula from how it's written in mathematics to Excel times A2. Again, my projected costs are going to be close to my, my actual costs. My revenue is my demand price times my quantity, and my profit is equal to my revenue minus my cost. I copy down. I look at this and say it looks like it breaks even somewhere between 20 and 30 and somewhere higher. So I'm going to start with 25 as a break-even point and then I'm going to look at it and say 
I think 120 looks like a good answer, something bigger than that. I go in and do my data. What if analysis full C? I'd like to change G13 to zero by changing A13 and it's at 21. Similarly, I'm going to go into my what if analysis with goal C and change G14 to zero by changing A14. And so I see I have a break even point at 21.54 and at 114. The important break even point is when I start making a profit. That's what the bank is going to want to know not how much do I flood the market so that I stop making a profit. We assume that you want to be somewhere in between these two numbers. So again, we looked at a simple case where the numbers were easy enough that I could turn this into a quadratic equation and solve with either the quadratic formula or simply factoring. The same approach lets me look at the cases where the numbers aren't so pretty and it doesn't factor out into nice, easy, clean answers, but I then simply do the same thing with goal C. Once I have a general template, I could have made my four constants as side constants that I can change and make this a chart that will work whatever the fixed cost, whatever the variable cost, whatever the demand intercept, and whatever the demand slope is. And finally, I look at the data case where I've got the demand price for a number of quantities and the cost for a number of quantities. I want to project out a formula for the demand price and project out a formula for the cost. Once I have the formula for the demand price, I can project a formula for profit or for revenue. And once I have revenue and cost, I can find profit. Thank you.